Under the Carpet is a talk show that explores topics that people find difficult to talk about. In this series, hashtag Me Too, my guests and I share our personal experiences and thoughts from the perspective of a corporate executive, a social worker, a parent, and a survivor. My name is Deborah Ting, and I'd like to invite you to join me on this journey. What does sexual harassment mean to you? Sexual harassment is uh, an act that falls on a spectrum of uh, acts related to sexual violence. And simplistically put, it's an act, uh, any unwanted behavior uh, that causes distress or alarm in, in anybody uh, is an act of harassment. But when people use or perpetrators use sexualized behavior, it becomes sexual harassment. Uh, but through the Sexual Assault Care Center uh, at AWARE, I've seen thousands of cases by now. Mm -hmm. And uh, while every survivor's experience is unique, mm -hmm. uh, the underlying story remains the same. Mm -hmm. And these are stories of violence. Mm -hmm. These were acts of violence that used sexualized behavior to exert power and control over survivors. It's not enough to say something is sex without consent mm -hmm. or, or touch without consent. Mm -hmm. Like when, we ha when, when um, there's theft, mm -hmm. we don't say it is gift giving without consent, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. we have to remember this, that violence may not always be violent. Mm -hmm. Like one of the survivors actually shared that when she was a child and she was sexually abused, mm -hmm. the perpetrator was very nice to her, mm -hmm. very very calm and would buy her chocolates mm. and would say I love you um, and it was not violent but it doesn't mean that this was not violence. The young girl at that time may actually quite welcome that kind of attention from this, this older person. Yeah, it doesn't justify what the perpetrator has done to that child, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's, that's what uh, many perpetrators do. They use the vulnerability of the person mm. uh, in that situation mm. and not always it might seem that it's uh, uh, there's force mm. or for example you sexually coerce your girlfriend to say this is what people this is what loving couples do mm -hmm. and then make them feel guilty for not um, giving enough love in the form of sexual contact these are all forms of sexual coercion Mm -hmm. And this could be emotional violence, mm -hmm. short of physical violence, mm -hmm. right? Um, but for us, we see all of that in the spectrum of violence. Mm. Wow. So, you know, the reason why we're doing this show is uh, a part of it is because of the, um, the Me Too movement that started in America. And it became such a big thing in America. But personally, I found that in the, the media in Singapore, it hadn't really... Um, matched the kind of you know publicity or the kind of uh, airtime that it got in somewhere other places in the world. We didn't see um, the similar kind of um, impact in Singapore. But what was interesting during that phase was that um, sexual assault care center mm -hmm. saw a phenomenal increase in the number of people who reached out for help and support. Yeah. So we saw 79% increase in the number of cases in the last quarter of wow. 2017 over the previous quarter. Since then, our average number of cases have doubled and it has wow. not gone down, it is only increasing. So it goes to show that when there is this tribe of people making it safe for mm -hmm survivors to speak about their experiences. Mm. Survivors do speak. Yeah. And it's not necessary that survivors speak to uh, random people on social media, mm -hmm. but uh, it's important they speak to somebody. Mm. So we were extremely happy that people mm. reached out for information and support on what they could have done in that situation or what can they do now. Mm. And uh, we supported a lot of these survivors. What I have seen in the cases that I've worked with, mm. there's always this one friend or a family member or a co-worker mm -hmm. who's victim blaming, who will mm -hmm. tell the survivor, maybe it was your fault. Mm -hmm. Maybe you shouldn't have done this. Maybe mm -hmm. you should have done that. Yeah. And who told you to go meet this person on Tinder, for example? Yeah. Uh, but they don't realize the impact on the survivors that, that 
will make or break the situation for them to reach out for help. Mm. So we've had cases where a survivor has experienced something 10 years back, mm -hmm. 20 years back, mm. and they told us that they spoke to their family member and they were told never to speak about it again. It is really important that the survivors know mm. that it's not their fault for what happened. Mm. And this is like uh, a given to our center. Mm. We, the way we do training, we tell all our volunteers, our helpliners, yeah. uh, one thing we have to remember is that it's never the survivor's fault. Mm. No matter what she was wearing, no matter yeah. how much she had to drink, yeah. no matter what they were doing before or after the assault, and every person who comes in contact with the survivor mm. can encourage or discourage them from seeking help. Mm. We would really love to hear about your experiences and thoughts. Please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel and also find us on Instagram and Facebook. And more importantly, please share this video with everybody you know. You might actually really help somebody just by doing that.